Now we're going to talk about the concept of first sale doctrine. Copyright holders have exclusive rights to distribute their copies of their copyrighted work uh, to the public, and they have the right to publicly display the work. But we have these things, you know, used bookstores, right, uh, that sell copyrighted books of video rental services that rent movies, museums, display copyrighted works and sculptures, resellers circulate copies of software, libraries lend books, and I'll probably double back here to video rental services. Not so much anymore. There are a few stragglers still around, but with the streaming of uh, videos available, we might just might not run into these issues, but think of video game rentals. There's still some folks who rent video games. Do these folks need permission to do these? They're distributing. Nope, they don't. As long as they own a copy that was made lawfully, such as a copy that was made or licensed by the copyright owner. The copyright owner's exclusive right to distribute and display is subject to the first sale doctrine. Once the copyright owner sells a copy, her rights with respect to that particular copy are limited. The new owner may distribute it or display it, not copy, not copy, adapt, or publicly perform, unless there's some exception to the rule, like fair use, but we'll get there. Under the statute of the first sale doctrine, the owner of a lawfully made copy or phono record may sell or otherwise dispose of that copy or phono record. This allows an owner to lawfully, that lawfully has a copy of a lawfully made copy, may display that copy to the public. So I bought a painting, I can resell it, I can give it away, I can hang it up in my office, I can loan it out to a museum to put it on display because I own the lawful copy. This doctrine only applies to distribution and display rights, not adaptation or derivative, not public performance, and not copy or reproduction. An owner of a book or a painting, video game, sculpture, etc. I could sell it, right? It's the other thing I could do with it. I could sell it or otherwise dispose of the copy, unless I've made a copy, then it's a bootleg or a knockoff or some otherwise infringed on another copy. So what I can't do, just to reiterate, copy, adapt, or publicly perform it. So if I bought a movie, I certainly couldn't play it in the neighborhood, have a, a movie outing and show it in the, uh, in the courtyard at my, uh, my condo association. The first sale only applies to that one copy. Or if I bought 10 copies, it applies to that 10 copies. And the key is that I have obtained it lawfully. If I've obtained it unlawfully, then the first sale doctrine doesn't apply. So let's actually, before I switch off to this, let's talk about a couple of examples. Alex decides to mount a production of Death of a Salesman. Alex purchases a copy of the play at a local bookstore. He scans the text of the play from the book into his laptop and prints 100 copies. Is he okay with doing that? with his copy that he bought lawfully? No, he's infringing on reproduction, the exclusive rights of reproduction. Let's say he gives 10 copies to members of his, uh, his group who use them to, uh, for rehearsal for the, for the play. Is that okay? That's not okay, because those 10 copies were unlawfully made, so they're not lawful and would not be able to distribute them because they're illegal copies. How about the group under Alex's direction then gives several public performances at a local theater? Can't do that. Can't do that under either option, whether you're using the first purchased copy or one of the copied copies. 
So that's not right because you can't do public performance. Alex sells 50 of the copies he made to members of the audience. Well, that's a big no-no, right? You can't distribute unlawful copies. How about the next day Alex visits a used bookstore and sells the copy that he had originally bought? Now that he can do. He has the lawful copy and he is free to sell it. He can even give it to him. He can donate it. He can do whatever he wants relative to that particular copy with the exception of the examples we just went through. How about Thatcher operates a used bookstore. He buys books from customers at garage sales, at estate sales, and anywhere else he can find them. He often gets donations from people cleaning out the homes. Idly browsing through his inventory, he reads about the potentially severe remedies of copyright infringement. Thatcher wonders if he is infringing the various copyrights in books that he sells. He is distributing copies to the public. Isn't that one of the exclusive rights of a copyright holder? Should he limit his service of should he limit his service to out of copyright books, such as those that are in the public domain? Well, first of all, he's good. He's good to go, right? For sale doctrine. He's those folks are doing what they are allowed to do with their lawful copies. As long as they're lawful copies, they bought them, they can donate them, they can sell them in their garage sales, they can bring them into him, he can buy them from them, and then he can resell them. So he's free to do that as long as the copies were lawfully obtained. He does not have to just rely on selling works that are in the public domain. So that's pretty straightforward, I hope. Uh, let's talk about some copyright holders, what they may, uh, how they might be limited in some rights. Uh, do you think they can be? Can copyright holders seek to limit first sale rights? That is my question. Can copyright holders limit first sale rights? Do you think they can do that? And if they could, what type of works? Computer software. Do we actually buy computer software to own? What usually happens with computer software? It's a license, a license to use. Maybe you can put three copies on a, uh, you know, you get three licenses to put on three different types of, you know, computer services or computers in your house, laptop, desktop. And it is, I will say, the courts are split on whether or not the first sale doctrine applies, whether you buy computer software or your license, whether you can then transfer that to somebody else under the first sale doctrine. So it's really going to depend on where you live, what jurisdiction that is. Uh, how about the first sale doctrine in digital works? How does this work or does it work? If you have a book, a CD, a picture, right, you may display that, that copy. Um, you hang a picture up that you bought on the wall. You might have a book you want to give away or a CD to give away. But what about digital works? Distributing a copy or displaying it. What do you have to do? You have to put it online, right? If you're going to display it, put it on a website. Can you do that? No, because this involves making a copy. Right? You're not hand delivering your copy to somebody. You actually have to make a copy to pass that copy along. Or if you want me to have your musical file that you downloaded, the song you downloaded, you had to delete your copy and send me. You send me a copy, you have to make a copy, send a copy, then delete your copy. This is a this is a very gray area with regards to the first sale doctrine. So keep those two things in mind, software licensing and digital works. You buy a, you buy a picture. You want to display it what on your website? You have to make a copy of it first, then put it up. And then now you're publicly performing it, you're putting it out there. Public display of a unlawful copy. So think about those things. How about uh, limits on sound recording under the first sale doctrine? The owner of a work can lease out a copy. The owner of a work can lease out a copy, but for some works, this could lead to infringement. 
So what do you see as a problem? I open up a music shop or a computer software rental. People come in and they rent it. What did, what would they might be doing? Making copies. So under the statue, software sound recordings have a special protection. It does not allow, does not authorize the owner of a phono record or a person in possession of a copy of a computer program to rent or lend the phono record or program for commercial advantage. So for sale doctrine does not protect rentals of sound recordings in the musical works embodied therein, uh, computer software, and the key here is commercial advantage. So if I loan it to a family or a friend, is that good? That's good. But if I do it and ask for money or payment, commercial advantage, not so good. Why do you think that is? It's really protecting the copying because it is real easy to copy music, copy software. But then that leads us to the question of video rentals. Looks like Congress made a special exception by creating the statue for sound recordings and software, but there's, you know, there is and was video rentals available. Congress didn't think unauthorized copying of movies was a danger back when this was passed. Music or movies, what are usually what in their think in their line of thinking, movies are often watched only once. While, you know, music and software is something that's used or listened to regularly. And it's certainly easier to copy. At the time, copying movies was a bit more cumbersome. Not so much anymore with all of the technology we have. But it was a little hard if you went to the movie store and rented a video cassette, VC, a VCR tape, or a DVD. It was a little hard to copy, copy those. Plus the fact that most people watched watch movies once. Video games, software, the exception does not apply to computer programs though that are in the computer, like in the hard drive of the computer. These are just softwares that people can transfer easily from one computer to another. Uh, video games that are part of software uh, fall under this category. So let's take a look at a couple exercises. If I can get my hands on those. So Becky is looking for new employment. She decides to take advantage of the first sale doctrine. She buys dozens of popular CDs and goes into business from her apartment, renting CDs by the day. Does the first sale Doctrine authorized these activities, and I hope you're shaking your head no, because that applies to sound recordings, and there is an exception for that, especially if I'm making money for a commercial advantage. So no, I can't. I am I'm engaging in copyright infringement, or Becky is. So Becky simply decides to sell all of her CDs to the public. Can she do that without infringing? Sure, that is covered under the first sale doctrine. Local bookie rents movies and audiobooks, such as a recording of Stephen Fry reading a Harry Potter book. For sale authorizes the rental of the movies. But with respect to audiobooks, is local bookie covered by first sale, which does not authorize rental of phono records or computer programs. So is this different? It's an audiobook. Would you think audiobooks are within the first sale doctrine? Or do you think they're under the exception? It's an audiobook, a sound recording. So it's something that's recorded for sure could constitute a sound recording. But audiobooks are not covered under this statute. They actually have the same reasoning as, as movies. 
it's something that will probably be listened to once. It's very long. It's very hard to copy. Um, so no, audiobooks do not fall under the realm of that exception. So let's talk about, there are two, there are exceptions to this rule. We'll talk more about schools in libraries, but this does not apply to schools and libraries. All right, we just finished covering the first sale doctrine and distribution. The other component is the display rights, the limitations on this display rights and the first sale doctrine. The section 17 USC 109 authorizes the owner of a copy uh, of a copyrighted work to display the work. I, I already mentioned that relative to paintings, photographs, and it's limited to lawfully made copies. So you can't purchase a photograph and then make copies of it to display around. Not all displays are covered. You cannot display the copy publicly, directly or by projection of no more than one image at a time to viewers present at the place where the copy is located. So kind of takes away from movies. A display over the internet is not covered. Public performance, not covered. If you bought a movie, I already mentioned this one too earlier. If you bought a movie, you couldn't have a showing in an auditorium anywhere or out in a public park anywhere. Even if you bought the movie, you can't show it. Some folks have run into this on, on campus uh, with regards to, you know, there's a movie that the campus had maybe in their library and somebody takes it out of circulation and then wants to display it for everybody at a particular location, kind of can't do that. And there's been, I've, at least I've heard that there's been very situ uh, various situations regarding that. So, so not all displays are covered. You can't certainly uh, put it out there uh, without showing one image at a time and it will not cover you if you put it out on the internet and public performance. So first sale doctrine only applies to distribution and display rights. We have some other limitations on exclusive rights that we're gonna talk about next.